Hi, my name is Stephanie Herring, and I am a student at Virginia Wesleyan College studying both music performance and Hispanic studies. And it has been my pleasure to present this video presentation to you because this opportunity has been immensely wonderful, quite overwhelming, but very fulfilling as far as being able to connect both my music studies and cultural studies in Spain, in Andalusia, this semester. So I really think throughout this entire project, I've been able to create this underlying connectedness of our, of our heritage, something that is completely new to America as a new nation, um, because we can chain together this uh, cultural diversity and religious diversity in this global community that is something so new in the modern age. And this idea of rapid technology and social awareness and how it's going to play a part in our future lives. So I'll start with uh, the Islamic history because the Islams had a great influence in southern Spain from the years 711 to 1492. So their empire lasted for nearly 800 years um, and it started uh, in the south in Cordoba and Granada up to Sevilla all the way to Toledo and um, they were very respected in their interdisciplinary studies as far as mathematics, science, the arts, philosophy, astronomy, um, botany. They connected everything together um, and as well as the architecture. This type of art, um, the Islamic art, is highly influenced by the geometric shapes as well as the floral design and arabesque patterns of uh, all of their architecture in Sevilla and Granada as well as Cordoba. I've had the pleasure to visit some of the most famous places um, from the Islamic Empire, including the Great Mosque of Cordoba, La Mesquita, as well as Alhambra in Granada. And these fortresses have lasted for 800 years throughout their own empire and up until the modern day when we continue to restore these um, magnificent buildings. the geometry that covers the architecture of these buildings is greatly influenced by their religion as well. For example, they use patterns of squares and triangles and, and other polygons that create interlocking designs that unify uh, the entire structure in believing in balance and the doctrine of, of unity. These geometric shapes separate the material world from the spiritual world. Um, and they also valued the mathematics and arithmetic in this geometry that created this perfection and understanding of universal nature that relates back to their doctrine of um, Allah as being the only one. Um, and it creates this very deep meditative state I think it's very interesting to create this connection between the uh, obvious visual effect of the geometric shapes in Islamic art as well as the ability to create um, the Gothic architecture and window traceries using the same geometric patterns of triangles or circles and lines um, and also squares. For example, in Gothic architecture, we have some new innovative um, building techniques as far as ribbed vaults, flying buttresses, um, as well as pointed arches. And this allowed for greater heights, as also thinner walls within the cathedral, and allowing for greater acoustics, as well as a, a better lighting effect. Also, something that caught my attention relating back to the geometry of the Islamic art during this period was the window tracery of the stained glass windows in the Gothic architecture. 
Um, now these window traceries, are, they appear very complex, but they're built on simple geometric shapes such as circles and lines. I've extracted a few videos that include um, gothic traceries such as trefolds, quatrefolds, and simple rose windows. And you can see in these videos that the computer programming sim simplifies the shape and design of, of the window tracery, which is a series of midpoints and connecting the radii from the circles, uh, creating this solid uh, foundation for the shape itself that we see as the audience, but really is created upon a foundation of geometric shapes. As far as relating this back to music theory and music history, during the Greek and Roman civilizations, the philosophers and mathematicians and scientists greatly uh, appreciated the uh, presence of the arts, not only in society, but as far as the foundations of, of the cosmos and the universe. For example, the Pythagorean, Pythagorean tuning is, is very basic and it's based on, on equal pitches in, in unison as well as fourths and fifths, which are very apparent in the Gregorian chants of the medieval age, the medieval period. Pythagoras, during the Greek civilizations, came about with just intonation, which is, some, which is something completely different from equal temperament that we use today. So there's been a modification throughout history with the different systems of tuning to comply with the modern age as far as technology and musical instruments available. Uh, this allowed for greater changes in even musical periods between the Renaissance, Baroque, classical, and modern ages when different intervals came about as far as thirds and sixths as well as diminished chords and different tonality to create a character within the music um, different than the harmonic unison of Pythagoras's tuning. This is the pure harmonic fifth, an A and an E. and the tempered version of a fifth, again, out of tune. We put these mistuned tempered intervals together in a major chord. You can hear the rough and restless quality that Helmholtz referred to. The pure chord rings true, every interval in perfect harmonic balance. simply about another sort of science that is fairly new um, and was created in the middle of the 20th century by Dr. Hans Jenny, who was a, a Swiss phys physician and scientist. He created this science called somatics, which is understanding the structure and dynamics of waves and vibrations. And of course, music itself is a series of waves and vibrations. the shapes 
of the sand or the salt on the oscillating table meet together to form certain geometric shapes relating the nodes of the waves from the frequency. So essentially, this is a way of visualizing sound, just like the geometry of the Islamic art and the window tracery of the Gothic cathedrals during the medieval period. Something very difficult with this project is that we have so many interpretations from what I'm trying to present to you. But I think it's a great way to analyze our progress of creativity and ability to create um, something that's going to retell our social values and cultural diversity of the modern age. as well as um, how important the progress of technology and innovation is and its reflection of our social values in architecture and music. Because being able to, to study in Europe, essentially this semester has brought my studies in Virginia completely alive. It's been quite fun uh, traveling here in Europe, but I have to say that I'm, I'm excited to bring this information to you and I'm excited to share my own enthusiasm for the arts and how they're going to play a key role in our society in the future.